All right, so what I'm doing for my sump is, this is a 10 gallon. I also have a 20 gallon, which is gonna be my refugium. I put this tape in here so that you could see the black lines. What these are, these are gonna be my baffles. This will be coming down, and this will be where my protein skimmer is and all the water enters into here. It's gonna to have to go over this baffle into the bubble trap, down underneath this one. It should be about an inch off the bottom of the glass and then back up over the top into here where my return pump will be. This one will just basically be a baffle, also not touching the bottom, so it helps. The refugium will be off on this side. There will be a 20 gallon tank that just drains into here and so that the bubbles won't go up underneath and go into the return. But it still allows for any of the, any of the copepods or anything to go up underneath and they get sucked back up, up into the tank. I started calling around to a few glass companies around here and was asking for prices on glass to make my baffles. Each one would have been about five bucks or so, um, somewhere around there, five, five to ten dollars, I forgot what it was. I had asked for a bigger piece and they said it would have been about fifteen dollars or so. So here I would have maybe either twenty to thirty dollars in glass. The way I handle that is, when I bought this tank, I just bought another 10 gallon tank. So what I'm gonna do is tear this 10 gallon tank down and I'm gonna use this glass and cut it for my baffles. I already have two sides that are the same exact size that I need width wise. Now I just need to cut them to the height that I need and then I can also cut the sides for the other two baffles that I'm going to need. So in order to do that, we gotta tear this down. It says it was assembled by Ken. Ken, you did a great job, but we're gonna have to tear it apart. The tools that I'm gonna use, it's gonna be a putty knife and a razor blade. First thing you wanna do is go ahead and pull this, pull the brace off, and have to just break the silicone. Gently pulling up at the same time. I also want to go on the inside because there's a bead on the inside, but it should be easier than the outside one. Now, if you're like me and you're only using it for the glass, you're not anything, and you're not going to keep the bracket, I'm just going to go ahead and use an X Acto knife also to help. But obviously, if you're going to reseal this tank and use it for something else, you don't want to cut the brace, or if you want a tankless or a rimless tank, you can also do that. You can see how much silicone is up underneath this, this piece. It covers about half of that, so we broke through all of it, but there's a nice big bead right on the top. this side off so far just there's a lot on the corners once it starts to come it'll just you can just pull on it just remember don't pull too hard because you don't want to break the glass just be gentle work it a little keep pulling and I'm not saving this so I don't care if the if it breaks how much silicone is still on that. You can see how much they put into these corners. That's why the corners are harder to get to. So now if you wanted a rimless tank, this is what you would do. Same thing, you just take that brace off. 
something as small as 10 gallons, you might be able to put a little braces on the side up here. If not, all you need to do, that's when you take your razor and you just start cleaning up all the silicone on the edges. My wife's gonna kill me when she sees this going into the carpet, but I wanted to do it on a softer surface so I didn't have to worry about hitting, on the, uh, hitting it on the concrete. Pull all the old silicone off inside and out, get this nice and cleaned up. I'm not gonna keep doing that right now, but if you wanted a rimless tank, there you go, that's how you're gonna do it. Be very careful on these edges because since it was underneath there, it might not be finished. You might end up cutting yourself. So I'm not gonna mess too much with this right now. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn it on its side and we're gonna do the same thing on the bottom. You can see there's not as much on the bottom because they don't need it to be as waterproof as the top. But right here, look, there's enough where it's actually coming out. It's coming out of the bottom. So some of it might be harder or about the same. You can see the only thing holding this little piece on is silicone also. Nice big thick bead of silicone. All right, now that we've got it off, you have a rimless tank. And you're gonna go ahead and start cutting the inside also. Once you've scraped away enough, you can get your straight edge and stick it into this corner. And just go very slowly. So you're cutting the seam between the two pieces of glass. Then do the same on the other side. I've been working on this side for a while and you can see how much silicone I've had to pull off before I actually got this piece remotely loose. Now the same thing with the bottom, you just wanna make sure all that silicone is nice and cut. I'm just barely pulling on it. I do not wanna put a lot of pressure on it because I do not wanna break this glass. You can hear the silicone letting go once you finally get enough of it. And you just lift your glass up, and there you go. You'll have your piece of glass to cut up. And you just continue that on every side. Should be a little easier now, because now you can get in there. You can get inside and really start cutting away at the silicone. All right, well, after I got the first piece off, the second, and third, and fourth piece got pretty easy. This is the base. And the front and the back. And here are the two sides. We put the glass in, I measured it to nine inches, and it's eight inches tall. You can see I put my 90 degree in there to make sure it's straight, and it's jammed in there so I don't have to actually, I cut it perfect so it doesn't have to be taped.
you can see my first water test, put it out in the yard and tested my first baffle and it is waterproof. All right, so now what I've done, I took a popsicle stick and I taped it to the side and I did the same on the other side so I have the same distance. It's a little more than an inch. That's kind of where I had my line anyways. And I'm using my 90 to make sure that it is flush top to bottom all the way. It's good. And then I have the same thickness of popsicle sticks. I have five of them, so it gives me a little over an inch underneath. And with this one, of course, you're only going to be able to put silicone on one side because you can't get your you can't get in on the other side. And there's my second baffle. So here's my bubble trap. It's a little wide, but I wanted to give it enough water, enough space to come on down. Go back up and the third baffle, the shorter one, will be here. Once this dries and I can pull those popsicle sticks out. Today what I'm going to work on is the refugium drains. I have the bulkhead and I have my drain. What I did was I cut every other one so it was a little further, it was a little more open. And that just threads in. So when I put my bulkhead in, of course you want to put the rubber gasket on the inside. And you just want to hand tighten this as much as possible. If you do put a wrench on it, you want like a tiny bit of a turn just to make sure that it's tight. You don't want to tighten it too much because you'll crack the glass. I have a one inch 90 and this just screws in and then this will drain in back into the sump return. All right, so I have the drain. You can see I put the 90s on. And then what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to cut a PVC, piece of PVC, so it drains down onto this side. So I measured it, I want, I want roughly about a 10 inch pipe. It's gonna end up about here. And then these aren't gonna get glued in. These are just gonna get fit in, just in case I need to pull it out to clean it or anything. You can see it's just a bit higher. In case this one gets plugged, I still have a, a backup on it. And then I'll go ahead and put, I'll go ahead and put that one on as well. And then we'll fit these two into the bottom of the stand. And here's the finished product. You can see the drain comes right into the refugium section. I already have my marine pier block and some leftover uh, dry rock that I have. It drains into these right into the return section. I had to put two 90s on there because there were a few small bubbles getting into the return. So now those just come right up into the middle and they don't go up underneath. And then here is the drain line. It goes into my filter sock. My protein skimmer, which is not on at the moment. And then you can see the water coming up over the top down underneath, back up and around. These are my levels, it's a little low right now. I need to fill it right back up. This is my um, this is my high and this is my low at the bottom. And that's the finished product. 